Welcome back, everyone. Ah, uh, Thomas. Agent Morgan, it's past 2100. Let's meet up again at the community center tomorrow. I haven't been sleeping much since this all started, to be honest. I'm exhausted. I was just about to suggest the same thing. I'll make arrangements for people to gather between 1500 and 1700. I'll try and get as many people as I can to come, so don't be late, okay? Don't be late. I'll be there. The community center's on the south side. I've marked it on your map. Thanks, Thomas. Well then, see you tomorrow. Picking up from where we left off, speaking of 80s movies, one jewel in the rough springs to mind. Deadly Spawn. Do you remember that one, Zach? Back in 83, directed by Douglas McCown. Right. It was filmed pretty cheap, but still it was pretty good. The monster design with the mouth crammed full of teeth? I loved it. So many delicious B-movie cliches. Did you know that they made a sequel? But I never got to see the sequel. The rental store didn't have it for some reason. They said the staff for the sequel was totally different from the original. Wonder how the sequel turned out. You know, the monster in that one responded to sound. Wait, Zach. Sounds a lot like the movie Tremors. I think that one was back in 89, directed by Ron Underwood. Now that was a great role for Kevin Bacon. A masterpiece. Zach, that one had sequels like crazy. I remember there was a fourth one. I've only seen the first one, though. Tremors. I think Fred Ward was in it. You say Fred Ward and I say, Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. That one was back in 85, I think. Directed by Guy Hamilton. I guess Hamilton was aiming to start a series like 007, but it had no sequels. A real shame. Do you remember the martial arts they used in that film? Called Sinanju? The ultimate in martial arts, using no weapons at all. Remo's master Chun ran across water, remember? And he loved soap operas. Man, that was a good character. He was played by Joel Grey, the best supporting actor in Cabaret. Of course, in Remo, he had so much makeup on you couldn't tell.
Zack, Emily arranged for people to come between 1500 and 1700. We can't do anything here right now. Let's come back at the right time. Now, Joel Gray's daughter is, of course... That's right, Jennifer Gray. You knew that, right, Zach? Jennifer Gray. She's in one of my most favorite movies. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. 1986, directed by John Hughes. Huh, that one was so 80s. Zach, you're not the most cheerful guy I know. But you really do like those cheerful movies. We used to love those teenage movies back then, didn't we? Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink. St. Elmo's Fire and Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That last one was in 1982, directed by Amy Heckerling. Now that was an impressive film. You've got Sean Penn in the lead, with Jennifer Jason Lee and Phoebe Cates, not to mention Nicolas Cage and Forrest Whitaker were in it too. And the original book and the script were written by Cameron Crowe. How could that not be a great film? Do you remember, Zach? When that movie ended, the last words, the end, was from an arcade game. That's right, it was from Missile Command. That stuck in my head for a while. The memories. I feel like I have a lot of movies to catch up on. Let's just hope we can get to the end of this case soon. Then maybe we can catch up on a few. Give some thought about what movie you want to see next, Zach. Zach, is there something here that you want to check out? We need to be at the community center by 1500 today. Just think of talking in front of all those people. What do you think, Zach? It's going to get fun.
Okay, Zach. I've been thinking about what movie I'd like to watch next. And finally, I've made a decision. It's always hard to narrow it down just to one movie. But I've put a lot of thought into this. And I'm sure you'll agree with me. 1975. Directed by Steven Spielberg himself. The grandfather of panic movies. Set in a small town in Massachusetts. That movie made me stay away from the beach for years. I was always afraid that a hand might come floating up. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yep. Yeah. It's Jaws. The underwater camera work accompanied by that John Williams music. I'd never been that scared by a movie before. But the best thing about it is that it isn't just another panic movie. The mayor who won't close the beach even when there are so many victims. And Chief Brody putting the citizens' lives above all else. The film gave a lot of time to the dispute and friction between them. It certainly had a lot of messages for a two-hour film. That's probably another reason why it was such a record-breaking hit. One of my regrets in life is that I didn't see it at the movie theater. I guess I was still just a child back then. But still, I wanted to taste that terror in real time. That reminds me, Zach. Did you know this one? Jaws also appears in another movie that was produced by Spielberg. The second Back to the Future. It was directed by Robert Zemeckis, who later made Forrest Gump. That's also a masterpiece, of course, but we'll discuss that another time. So, the scene where Jaws appears is right after Marty McFly goes 30 years into the future. He passes by a movie theater and is attacked by a holographic shark. Marty is shocked, of course, but looking closer, he sees the words, Jaws Part 19. The director is credited as Steven Spielberg Jr. In reality, there were actually only four Jaws movies, but it was still a great joke. 30 years from 1985 would be 2015. We'll be there pretty soon. I wonder what life would be like by then, Zach. Greenvale Community Center. Now that's an impressive building. Clock Tower is impressive too. Zach, I haven't been on stage like this since elementary school. I'm not some tree in the wind this time either. Well, that was a tough role. I was a piece of scenery. Bright red tree. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming today. Getting right down to business. Agent Morgan from the Federal Bureau of Investigations wishes to speak with you. Good afternoon. I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Some of you are already aware by now of the tragic murder of Anna Graham. Truly a heinous, terrible crime. I've come to this town to solve the murder of this young, beautiful girl. And to bring the one responsible to justice. Unfortunately, incidents like these have a tendency to happen again. I ask to have you gathered here so I can share some advice in order to minimize the risk of further fatal incidents. Firstly, please stay away from any dark, dangerous, isolated places. Those of you with children, especially of Anna's age. Please, guide your children away from such places at all costs. Secondly, avoid going out when it is raining. Now I've heard the folklore story of the raincoat killer. There is a chance that the murderer is mimicking the story. Women should also be especially careful I would hate to see more victims. Please. 
who's the fashionably late one. That's Carol, Thomas's sister. She owns a bar. Thomas's sister. So, as I have said, avoid going outside when it is raining. Young women should be especially careful. Report anything or anyone suspicious immediately. The murderer will be caught and brought to justice. But you must all remain on guard until we do so. That's all I have to say. Thank you. When paying for our sins, we must not frown. The loss of Anna was for that debt. When purple fog covers our town, we'll all wander in hell, I fret. So says Mr. Stewart. Sure knows how to steal thunder. Well then, Zack, let's ask some questions before all these guys leave. Agent Morgan, here's your chance to get to know some of the townsfolk. Don't let it go to waste. Agent York? Your words really made me think about Anna's death again. How could one do such a terrible thing? I'm still in shock. <sighs> Thomas, I forgot to ask. You don't have a tattoo on your back, do you? A uh, tattoo? Well, I do, actually. But why? Could you show it to me, please? What? Now? Here? Yes, please. This is vital for our investigation. Okay, if it's gonna help you any. <sighs> well, I'm wondering who G is now, but aside from that... Did it tell you anything? It told me that you didn't kill Anna. Of course not. What are you saying? You ought to see that tattoo, Zack. A big heart with an arrow through it and love G in the center. I don't know when he got that done, but we've all been through the 80s. Quite a performance, mysterious and very poetic, but I don't think many of your audience appreciated it. Mr. Francis York Morgan, the purple fog appears with rain, soiling and ruining our town. The evil does not drain. Find out why the town is soiled. Remove the source from which it boiled. Then, and only then, your case is solved. But for this to happen, to solve the crime, the proper must do the proper at the proper time. It is not yet mine, that is, Mr. Stewart's time, not mine. But if you, Mr. York, find the right timing to chat with me, that is, with Mr. Stewart, may that be. Informative and fruitful, you will see. 
So says Mr. Stewart. So, Harry, you know something. But there's some reason why you can't tell me yet. Is that what you're trying to say? Cut the poetic rubbish, Harry, and tell us what you know. We can force you to talk, you know. Mr. Francis York Morton, pay close attention to the signs, the omens, and the premonitions. Small they may be, they still are finds, and helpful to your investigations. So says Mr. Stewart. Thanks for the warning, Harry. But don't worry. Me and Zack, we know what we're doing. Agent York, are you finished asking questions yet? When you're done, let me know. We'll all get dinner. I'm FBI Special Agent, Francis York Morgan. So Anna was killed. But why does that bring the FBI here? I have an interest in murder cases involving young women. Well, you know, man, this might just be another case to you. But it means the death of a friend to me. And I want you taking this lightly like it's just another case. I never take anything of this nature lightly, I assure you. I'm here to apprehend the perpetrator who did this. Yeah, because local enforcement can't shine their own boots, right? Good point. You can't always count on the police now, can you? But that doesn't mean you're going to capture the perpetrator yourself, Quint. How do you know my name? I memorized the name of every citizen before arriving in town. I also know about you and your significant other. You mean Becky? Don't underestimate the FBI. We know and see everything. I'm sorry if I was a little harsh. I want to help, I do. Okay? Okay, Zach, I'll tell you how I knew his name. He's got a small Q on his hat. That was the only name beginning with Q that I could think of. He was even kind enough to tell us his girlfriend's name. I can read him like a book, Zach. You're York, right? I'm Richard Dunn, the owner of the Darts Bar, Swery 65. How'd you like the town? Oh, it's great. Aside from the murder that happened here. Yep. I mean, murder just doesn't fit with a small town like ours. Well, Richard, I'll have to correct you on that. Crimes don't care about size. Big town, small town, just isn't a factor. Uh, I guess you're right. So... How did you know Anna? I've known her since she was a child. She was the same age as my son. You know, she always stood out, being pretty and all. Just like her mother, Sally. What do you know about Sally? Well, I, I went all through school with her right here in town. I never thought our children would be the same age. I don't see her here today. Ah, well, see, she lost her husband, and this time it's her daughter. She's at home right now, trying to make peace with it all. You seem to know a lot. How long have you been in love with her? <laughs> hey, hey, don't go there. That scar of yours tells me you got your hands full too, right? Let's not dive into personal matters. It'll be better for you and me. You're right, Richard. Collecting gossip won't help with the matter at hand. Good evening, Agent.
Good evening, Mr. Brian, the gravekeeper. <clears throat> Brian. Mr. Brian. I like the retro look. Auditioning for Little Grave on the Prairie? Anna. Oh, she was so beautiful. Too soon. Mm. Too, too soon to go to the grave. So sad. So sad. I totally agree. That's why I'm here, looking for the one who did it. Were you close to her? Mm. Anna, <laughs> her smile, so warm. Anna, blonde hair, so bright. There's a graveyard somewhere in town, Zack. I'm not excited about the idea, but maybe we should at least check it out. Anna was an airhead. What do you mean? Are you saying she was killed because she was an airhead? Or are you saying that she was an airhead for being killed? I'm sure she's still an airhead even in heaven. She changed her hair every day. If she lost a pound, she'd be ecstatic. Gain one and she'd almost be in tears. She broke many, many plates every day at the diner and she'd always have a smile on her face. Always having fun. Everyone looked at her and knew she was a cute, adorable, loving airhead. But they would be smiling right along with her. I wouldn't be surprised if the angels smiled with her too. <laughs> Isaac and Isaiah said that Anna was a fairy of the forest. A goddess. So you're the FBI agent, are you? I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I'm the general. I fought for my country in the Vietnam War. A real-life war hero. So why are you living here? Soldier, this is my hometown. After a man returns from war, there's no place to go other than his hometown. In your little speech, you mentioned the raincoat killer. Was that a problem? You imbecile. The raincoat killer's no myth, not mere folklore, not a fairy tale. It's based on actual events that happened in this town. It is. I'm interested. Can you tell me more about this? <laughs> you kids today don't even know how to ask for something right. Soldier, if you want to hear more, you come to my office. He literally exudes raw power, Zack. Despite the credibility issues, we should give him a visit. One thing, though. He calls himself a general, but isn't that a sergeant's uniform? Agent York, you make any progress? Of course. Plenty. Uh, tell me, Usher, when is Anna's funeral? Mm, that's still undecided. Sally isn't really in any condition to do it right now. Her mother? I don't see her here. Anna was a sole reason for living, after her husband was deceased. Well, she's probably huddled up at home. 
and I should probably take some time to pay her a visit. Well, yes, you should. And I'd appreciate it if you could, too. Um, but don't go too hard on her, okay? Are you getting closer to catching the murderer? Hello again, Fiona. Good to see you here. Well, Dr. Johnson told me to be here. He said it would be important. Well, that was good advice. He may be young, but he seems like a wise man. Oh, and he's a very hard-working person, too. Everyone thinks he's some kind of weirdo, but I don't think so at all. People don't understand why he's in the autopsy room all day, but I do. He's doing research to make the world a better place in the future. You know, he already made a fortune in L.A. with his career. I did not know that. You didn't? Oh, the doctor is a very rich man. He has a really big house over by the lake. Amazing, Zack. He must be loaded. Rich and young. A perfect combination. But you don't get that feeling from him at all, do you? He doesn't show it. That's one of the things I like best about him. Well, I could have been fooled if it weren't for you. Thanks for the valuable information, Fiona. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. Wesley, owner of the gun store called Panda Bear. People around here call me the gunsmith. Was there something you want to ask me? How do you make a living running a gun store in a place like this? I'd be worried because there can't be that many customers. Worry gives a small thing a big shadow. I do gunsmith work in my shop, too. If you got the skills, the customers find you. All you need is a network. I hope so. You've got quite a selection here. No wonder people come from all around. Even today, a customer paid me to go to Seattle for some help. I just got back. I see. Well, I'll be sure to visit your store sometime. I'd like for you to take a look at my gun. Understood. Look forward to it. The shop will be open again tomorrow. It's usually open from 2000 to 0600. See you then. I'm U.S. Special Agent Francis York Morgan. And you are? Olivia, Nick's wife. Anna worked at your husband's diner, right? What kind of girl was she? Well, she was a very hard worker. A nice girl. Did you ever see her acting strange? Well, not really. But there was one thing. Well, you see... The diner closes when it rains. Many shops do that around here, as you might have heard. Anyway, Anna always seemed unfocused the day after it rained, and came in late, too. It was almost as if she used up all her energy the day before. Come to think of it, that was really strange. Did that legendary monster really kill her? It wasn't a monster. Just a criminal. A criminal I'm going to catch and bring to justice. I'm U.S. Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I presume you are the owner of the diner that Anna worked at? That's right. I'd like to ask you a few questions about Anna Graham. Did you notice anything strange about her prior to the incident? <laughs> Nick, are you hiding something? No, nothing. You sure? 
I'm sorry, but I don't like repeating myself. You're Isaac and Isaiah's mother? Yes, I'm Lily. I'm FBI Special Agent... Agent York, right? You are good. <laughs> the handsome special agent from the big city. The facial scar trademark. The way you introduce yourself. Everyone's talking about you. Well, I can't say much about the scar. But the way I introduce myself... Zack and I consider it a kind of ritual of sorts. Everyone has their own rituals. It's like always leaving the house left foot first. It's one of those things. You certainly are a funny one. So have you noticed anything strange or out of place recently? Well, Becky's been taking a couple of days off from work, but aside from that, I heard she was in shock after the murder. But... You think there's something else? Well... I took the boys along to see her today. She's always so kind to them and they love seeing her too. But she took in the boys and told me to wait outside. Something about a special secret between just the three of them. I just couldn't understand it. Now that's interesting. Thank you, Lily. Perhaps we should give Becky a visit tomorrow, Zach. Yeah! Hey there, FBI. I'm Keith Ingram. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. That's what everyone always calls me. Okay, York. No problem, man. So, Keith. I hear you run the Milk Barn convenience store. That's right, man. Rock and roll! Do you sell raincoats there by any chance? Yeah, but nobody ever buys them, though. Anyone who wears one of them, I say, just ain't a rocker. But you know, that scar of yours. Now that scar rocks! This scar rocks? <laughs> now that's a new one. I'll drop by your store soon, and let's talk then. Yeah, cool, man. Rock on, FBI! Mr. Morgan, you're quite an impressive public speaker. Really? Thank you, Polly. You reminded me a little of a play I saw when I was younger. What kind of play? I'm talking about back when this place was still called the Mercury Theater. When I was young, I used to come here often with my husband. God rest his soul. We'd come on the weekend to see the latest play. He'd always pretend to be uninterested, but I could tell he was excited inside. He was just one of those kind of guys, really, thinking about it now. Really, Polly? So what's your favorite play? Oh, well, I like so many. There was one in particular, but I can't recall the name anymore. Oh, it was a very famous one, too. Something by Shakespeare? Oh, um... No, nothing. One more bell that doesn't ring anymore. I've always been forgetful about the plays we used to see anyway. Oh, and my husband would get angry at me for forgetting what we saw. He'd go on for hours retelling what the play was about. His eyes were so sparkling, like a happy young boy. I see. So, what's your favorite play? Oh, I almost forgot, Mr. Morgan. We're going to have another guest soon. I have to get back and get things ready. Sorry for having to hurry away. I'll see you back at the hotel. Zack, I think she could embarrass the toughest of the FBI's interrogators. She successfully avoided answering my question, Zack. Amazing.
Oh my, my pot is getting cold. Hey, mister, my pot is getting cold. You are... who? What are you saying? I'm Sigourney. Sigourney. Sigourney, okay. Now, what is the matter? Can you explain? No time for chatting. I need to hurry. My pot is getting colder. Oh, you're useless. Zach, we've met all sorts today, but really, she takes the cake. Amazing. Jim, thanks for your help in the forest. How are Isaac and Isaiah? They're fine. They really seem to love their grandpa. Well, I guess they do, son. I want to keep them away from the filth of the material world as much as I can. Their mother agrees, which is why she lets me take care of them so often. And that's why I want you to solve this case quickly and go home. Those rumors about that scar of yours do more damage than good around here. I guess I reek of the material world, don't I? I have to, in order to do my job. But I understand what you mean. I'd think the same if I was born in a place like this, Zack. Hello again, Agent York. How are you? Good, thanks. And you? Oh, I'm feeling pretty good today. Well, that's good to hear. Do you have any information that could help me out? Information? Sounds difficult and not my kind of conversation. Anyways, you should come by the gas stand again. I'll give you the best service in town. Zach, perhaps you can tell me. Why did she bother coming here? I ain't got nothing to tell the cops. What about the FBI? Shut up! At least give me your name. I'm Jack. They call me Raging Bull. That's a manly nickname. If you want info, it'll cost you. I only talk to Ben Franklin. You know, first impressions are important. I can detain you for a few days, and maybe you'll become more fun to meet. <laughs> <sighs> Zack, this is a waste of time. Let's go. Agent Morgan, I'd like to let everyone go home now. Let's go outside. <laughs> 